YouTube as it going the goat house is back today we're going through every single NFL team and I'm giving you a realistic free agent that those teams must sign this 2022 free agency so yeah we're keeping it realistic cap space definitely factored in we're not going to give out players that teams cannot afford so they have to fit it has to be a realistic target for those teams in free agency so that all plays a part there it's a video we do every single off season and i'm really excited to do it today so we're going to break it down all 32 nfl teams full not just free agency coverage just nfl coverage in general here at the goat house but can't wait for free agency we got predictions videos like this we have grades for all the signings so really excited hopefully you guys can join us patreon has some bonus content for the offseason in general uh, check out our twitter we'll have live updates live news rumors predictions everything on our twitter there's a link down below uh yeah and here's our twitter echoes nfl Important links down below, pin in the comments. Let's go through every team. Let's start with the AFC East team. Let's start with the Patriots. Devondre Campbell, who had a breakout year for the Packers this year. This is a guy I want the Patriots to target here. I think it's a very good fit. Obviously, at the inside linebacker position. The, the Patriots are a little tight on cap space. There are some ways that they can clear a little bit. They're not gonna be they're not gonna be able to go crazy like they did last year. That's just a fact. They're just not gonna be able to go that crazy. But they have less needs this this upcoming offseason here, obviously. They need help stopping a run with the linebacker. They need a receiver. I think linebacker might be that biggest need. You know, Dante Hightower is a free agent. Is he the, you know, is he the same with what he used to be? I think if you add Campbell, kind of what the Packers did, they were struggling to stop the run. Add Campbell on the inside there and get a true inside linebacker. Patriots kind of, kind of got those hybrid type players in there. They get Campbell in there, which should, I don't think he should be overly expensive because it's he, he's been decent, but this year he was great. You know, is it a one-year wonder? Is he only fit the Packers? Packers a little tight cap space. This is a guy I want the Patriots to go for. I think it's realistic that they can get him and that they will go for him. So uh, that's who I like for the Patriots. Speaking of the Patriots, we have the Jets targeting a Patriots corner. And, you, and I'm not predicting the Jets with, with all these. I'm not predicting them to actually land the, these guys. It's a good fit. It's realistic cap-wise. And it's a guy that they sh will and should target. The Patriots could very well end up back with J.C. Jackson. It's not a guarantee. There's guys I left off this video, um, you know, that I top targets that I think um, – will very, very likely go back to their team. So that's why I left them off. But the Jets, we saw them run quite a bit of man coverage this year. I think they're, they're going to want to mix it up. Robert Sala and his defense, I think they're going to kind of go back to his old ways, cover three. But still, they want to run man coverage. They want to mix those together there. Uh, J.C. Jackson, a very good man coverage corner. It's a young team. This is kind of one of those teams we hope that could be one of the teams of the future. So J.C. Jackson's still a little bit on the younger side there. So I think it'll be a pretty good target. They have a lot of cap space, so they could uh, they could pay him a lot. And they could pay him top-tier cornerback money here. So I like to fit uh, with the team there, and they're definitely going to be in the market for corners. You know, After J.C. Jackson... You know, maybe you look at uh, if you can't get him, maybe a guy like Carlton Davis from the Buccaneers, Dante Jackson from the Panthers, perhaps. So there's some corners out there. J.C. Jackson's going to be the top one there. So we'll see if the Jets can make a move. We'll see if the Patriots stop it from happening there. Uh, the Bills, Bills don't have a lot. They don't have too much wiggle room there for the, for cap space. They're better than there's a lot of teams in a bad situation. I can't say that they're in a very bad situation, but I'm not expecting a whole bunch of big moves from the Bills. Uh, but they do have some free agents of their own in the interior defensive line. Maybe they look to get one of those guys back between Phillips or Butler. Uh, but they also can add a veteran guy like Akeem Hicks, um, who's still very, very solid. It's just how many games is he going to play? And they kind of could take it. It's, the Bills are going to be a playoff team. You know, have Hicks in the rotation maybe, playoff time. This is his time. You know, he can be that star player in that moment. It's a guy that can stop the run on the inside at a high level, uh, and he can create some interior pressure as well. So the Bills, very good roster. Don't have too many needs going in this offseason. Uh, maybe defensive tackle and then maybe one corner they could use, but start to look out for the offensive line for the future. But not not too much there. I really like Key Mix for them. You know, he could sign a one-year deal cheap where it's not affecting them their cap situation maybe they want to do a two-year deal and have it back loaded in the second year so he doesn't really cost anything this year to me that that makes sense um it's a guy i think could pair well with ed oliver obviously it's not a long-term option though but again you could bring back harrison phillips uh which would make sense and the bills can get him back for you know somewhat on the cheaper side uh but i like hicks i like hicks for them kind of get the veteran guy in there for a uh, again a short-term deal because you're trying to win right now 
Uh, then the Dolphins, uh, like they, they got to go for Teron Armstead. This is one of the top free agents in free agency in 2022. It's rare that these stud Pro Bowl level, I'd say all Pro level tackles uh, are available. And then you know their team, Saints, who are going to be fighting to get him back. Uh, they're they're in a little bit of a, they're in a tough situation, obviously, with the cap space. But um, it's sometimes you know you're able to clear a space and get your own guys back. But my point is, you know, maybe he's available. Maybe it's pretty realistic for a top option here uh, to be available. So the Dolphins are really trying to complete that offensive line, and um, and this this is how you could do that. I mean, you got a lot. They actually, it's. It's still an it's an offensive line that can actually get better, you know. Without you because know, they got basically they got a lot of young guys that are continuing to develop. Sometimes it just takes that veteran, like solid veteran presence, that piece to make the whole thing click. And I think this would be it. Dolphins have a, a league high cap space as well, so um, I would I would really like this for them. I would be shocked if they didn't weren't in on Armstead. If, if free agency came and he was still available, sometimes guys are taken off the market before, but if, he, if free agency came and he's still available, I'd be shocked if the Dolphins didn't make an offer. This would be big time for them. Again, they have the cap space. You know, they had Mike McDaniels, kind of, you know, Trent Williams. That kind of Trent Williams is going to be a better, a little bit better tackle, but we're talking about top-tier left tackles. You know, Williams is over there with the 49ers or Mike McDaniels. This makes sense to me. It's a similar fit there. Um they got to go all out for it, you know, while they have the opportunity. Have to. This would be huge for the Dolphins. Uh, NFC East teams, Washington. You're looking through Washington's roster, man, they don't they don't have a lot of giant needs actually. Uh, quarterback, that's a pretty big one, uh, but there's not a, like a long list of needs. So some other guy to figure out the quarterback situation, whether it's trading for a guy or drafting a guy. Drafting a guy here, you know, the the quarterbacks and free agency. They they may say we might as well go with. Uh, Heineke again. We might as well. But looking at the rest of the defense, I think they can benefit from adding a, another safety. Uh, Cameron Curl, I like him at free safety. We saw them moving him around a little bit. Uh, I, I like him at free safety better. Uh, and Tyron Matthews is a guy you can, that can move around multiple different spots. Obviously pretty versatile, but I like him kind of strong safety in the slot, in that area, can man up on somebody. But uh, I think Ron Rivera wants... He's going to focus on getting a big-time player here. I mean, Tyron, add a Tyron Matthew at Washington defense. His defense is going to be really good. It's going to be really good. And Ron Rivera's, you know, he knows it was a letdown. They want this defense to be better. He's going to go make sure it's getting better. He wants to go back to running more of the cover three, that classic Ron Rivera uh, defense. And I think, you know, having uh, a corner that can kind of handle – pretty much everything but handle things around the box area too is big time for them uh and you know and, you know again Matthew you can line up in a the slot they have Kendall Fuller is pretty good in the slot but he's playing pretty well for them outside so they're kind of going back to playing that I, I think a, a, an addition like this which Washington has the money too they have the cap space unless they trade for a big time quarterback that's pretty expensive Deshaun Watson those it's a for an example um uh, then maybe they won't be able to do this uh but um I think this would make their defense to what we thought it would be this year. So I think this would be big. Uh, you know, they could use a linebacker, but they got some young guys that could step up as well. Uh, but I like the fit here with Matthew. And um, it sounds like he, he it's realistic he could be going elsewhere. We'll see. Chiefs will miss him if they do. Giants uh, definitely need to get the offensive line under control. They got an offensive minded coach, a good one um, as well, in, in Brian Dabal. And, I, you know, I like the pieces they have on defense. I think they could use. Uh, Really, the only thing they can use, I think they can use an inside linebacker that can, that can blitz, do other things to fit Don Don Martindale's scheme. The draft's full of those guys, though. Go to the draft there, um, and then you have two for early first round picks. So one could be used on an offensive lineman or a quarterback if you're feeling dangerous. Uh, but uh, you got to get this offensive line together. You got to get it together. A couple interior guys they might they may need, maybe two, uh, and then maybe a tackle too to go along with Andrew Thomas. I think it's a good start here. Lakin Tomlinson. Um, is a fantastic guard from the 49ers. The 49ers will be trying to get him back, but it's no guarantee there. If the Giants add him, it's a pretty good veteran piece that will boost your offensive line. So that's who, that's who I want them to look at. Uh, and, yeah, they're in a tough spot in the draft too, I suppose, because they got two early first-round picks. And are you going to take a guard with one up there? Maybe, maybe a little early for Zion Johnson. I like him a lot, but maybe a trade back for him. But if you stay put, make, make your current selections, uh, the guard group really starts to get it really drops off, so you're gonna ha you're gonna be missing out then, um, you know after the first round, 
So maybe you take care of business and free agency like like uh, what I'm suggesting here. Uh, next up, the Cowboys. This is a tricky one because the Cowboys are they're pretty damn low on cap space, negative cap space. They'll look they'll they'll look to clear some and, and they'll push some money back. Um, it's tricky. Will they be able to f- afford Foise Al- uh from the Falcons, who Dan Quinn actually coached uh, when he was with the Falcons, obviously. And Alu Okun, ok- Akun, I, uh, I, I think is underrated. I think he's an underrated player. Um, fantastic this year. I think he's good in coverage and stopping the run. Uh, you know, so I think it, that's why it's tricky. It, how much money is he going to get? If the Cowboys move some money around, cut somebody, cut some players, you know, will they be able to afford him? That's kind of the big question. It sounds like I would I'm kind of guessing he's going to get underpaid. That's kind of my guess. You know, he very well could end up back with the Falcons. Um but this is somebody that would fit the Cowboys. Not too many needs with the Cowboys. Uh maybe it's appealing with Dan Quinn there. Uh I think it would be. And then Micah Parsons kind of splitting off ball linebacker, edge rush. Played a little bit more off ball than he did edge rusher, but adding another linebacker, especially with Van Der Esch being a free agent, I think can help you continue to do that. Maybe play him at the edge more, Parsons. That is. Um, so this this would make sense to me. It's just it's a tricky one on, on how much is he going to get paid. It's really it's really tricky. I think because um, people don't talk about him like he's a big time linebacker, but I, I, that's why I think he's underrated. Uh, to the Eagles, I, I like this fit a lot. Marcus May. From the Jets, I didn't see much at all from him this year. Uh, he had a fantastic year last last season, actually. Uh, the, both Eagles safeties are free agents. They're two starting safeties. And they could look to get better either way. Uh, Jonathan Gannon, I, I thought, did a good job with the Eagles defense last year. I mean, they got to the playoffs. They were better than expected. It was a pretty balanced defense. They didn't really have... I mean, they got holes in terms of looking at the roster on paper, but in terms of how they played on the field, I mean, they, they were pretty balanced. They stopped the run and stopped the pass pretty you know pretty equal pretty balanced but um the negative in Gannon's defense I thought it was kind of a kind of a bland defense you know kind of uh it's missing a spark missing something you know they were weren't too creative and that's probably because they couldn't really be you know a lot of cover too not too much blitz I think you get creative when adding a guy like Marcus May. This is a guy that's pretty versatile in terms of the safety position. He can play free or strong. He's experienced playing both. Because remember, he played with Jamal Adams. He was playing more free while Adams was in the box. Adams left. He actually was, he was playing both still, but he actually playing more strong. Uh, and uh, I like what I saw from him there, too. So I think you get kind of get creative with him. Uh, zone coverage, man coverage. Yeah, he can man up in guys like tight ends in the slot. So I think it's a, a, a step towards making this defense a little more creative and that could be scary then, you know, because it was already pretty good. It just wasn't unique in any way, you know. So I like the fit of what Gannon's trying to do, in my opinion. I this is one where it's kind of out there a little random, but you know, I, I think I think there'd be I really think they'll be interested in Marcus May. So we'll see. Uh, next, we've got the Ravens. Uh, Chandler Jones, big time veteran pass rusher here. The Ravens don't have a whole lot of space. You got enough wiggle room to to party, I suppose. Uh, not too much, but Ravens. Don Martindale's gone. You know they're going. I think they're going to keep basically the same base defense, a scheme, but uh, this a little different concepts. Obviously, they're not going to run as. I'm kind of assuming here, but I'm pretty confident about it. They're not going to run as much man coverage. They're not going to blitz from the inside linebacker position as much. They're not going to drop their edge rushers in coverage as much because it's a pretty specific scheme that Martindale runs. Um, so you're going to need a pure pass rusher, a guy that could. Uh, and a guy like Chandler Jones could fit any scheme. So if they did do try to switch it up even more than we think, it works here. Uh, but a guy that could just straight up get after the quarterback, you know. Uh, and they have some guys, you know. Uh, Tyus Bowser who's currently injured, but I think he'll be good to go by uh, by the season. Uh, you know, and he's an underrated pass rusher, but a guy that they really like because he's probably one of the better, maybe the best pass rushers that can drop in coverage. Uh, then you have Odafe away, who I love. He's got a lot of upside. I don't think we can expect full consistency from him quite yet, and that's okay. So you get a, And this is a team that can win now. And teams that can win now, you need to be able to get after the quarterback off the edge consistently, and you're switching your defense to do that more. So go get that guy. Chandler Jones, I think this can be, again, the Ravens don't have a whole lot of spending money. This is a guy that could sign a one- or two-year deal uh, to go play for a good defense 
that's maybe maybe a little bit cheaper than where he would go to play for a team that's not as good as the Ravens. So it made sense to me. If you get this guy, you're set at edge rusher. Uh, the younger guys can kind of learn from him, and they you know they can play well together. So that made sense to me here. Uh, next, the Browns would like for them to go for a big time receiver. Chris Godwin's that top receiver. Will the Bucks be able to get him back? They got a load of free agents. Uh, not the most cap space. They're going to get some good guys back. They're probably going to lose some good guys. You know, you think that they really try to bring back Chris Godwin. We will see. Uh, the Browns, again, they need a big-time receiver. That, that, that Mainly, you know, because they had some struggles at the quarterback position. You know, a guy that can kind of get to scheme things up too because they like to run the ball. They like their play-action pass. You can scheme things up. Godwin really good at going across the field. That kind of works with uh, play-action, obviously, rollout. Uh, so I think that would work. Some, a guy that they would really like, a guy that can play, that can dominate the slot, also can play outside. Uh, what do they do with Jarvis Landry? I, you know, they could move on from him uh, because they can save a pretty good amount of money, over fifteen million, if they do go uh, decide to move on from him. So uh, I think Godwin would be big time uh, for that offense. Will this be an appealing spot to Godwin if he's got his choices? Uh, will they have to you know, break the bank for him because maybe he doesn't want the run-first offense? So that's kind of the problems there. Maybe Godwin won't choose the Browns, but I'm sure the Browns will choose will choose Godwin there. Uh, so that's the type of guy they need in there. Steelers, uh, Teron Armstead, he's popping up again. We talked about him with the Dolphins. I think both these teams, this guy needs to be the, the number one priority, number one target for teams like the, the Dolphins, the Steelers, several other teams. But uh, this is Steelers, again, the offensive line isn't what it used to be. Struggled these last couple years. Uh, but they got they they drafted all right last year. They got some young guys in there, especially on the interior, uh, where if they – Add a veteran piece, you know, add a big time leader veteran piece here. Uh, it could do wonders for them. So this is in the Sewers got a lot of cap space, too. A lot of cap space. Uh, they add a guy like this, you know, and then you kind of could focus on the rest in the draft here where this is not too much of a worry, which uh I mean this would be a big time addition. Whoever gets them, you know, it could be the Saints getting them back. I mean, it's one of the top options in free agency. That I think it's realistic that somebody else he can be on a new team. We'll see though. But that's definitely the Steelers should be their top target. I I, I think it will be. I'm pretty confident with that there. Um next up, Bengals, uh Brandon Scherf from the Washington football team. Guard, obviously, the Bengals. Really, I mean, they're in the Super Bowl right now this weekend, but they, they could use uh they they can use offensive line that's really all they need but they need a lot of it there to to make this team elite all the way around all the way through that roster uh so adding a guy like Scherf who's a big time guard the only negative is he does have injuries pop up a bit that's the only that's the negative there but he's very very good uh you know so if they add Scherf in there I'd give him a big boost there you know protect Joe Burrow from the interior pressure that's getting at him pretty quick uh, because the lack of play uh, in the inside there. But they could use a tackle as well. You know, Riley Reef a free agent. He's playing fairly well, so we'll see if they bring him back. But good news is Bengals, Bengals are in a Super Bowl right now, and they got a lot of cap space. That's that's fantastic. So they're looking pretty pretty damn good. Uh, Lions, Michael Gallup. I like Michael Gallup for the Lions. We, it's no secret they need a receiver. They need many things, but they need a receiver. Um, they hit on Amonra St. Brown. Not too much of a surprise. We all liked him. Uh, and then he is a guy that can play in the slot and outside. That's what I love about him. But he's, uh, I think, more effective in the slot. They played him a lot in the slot there, kind of great, get creative with them. So they need to pair him up with a legit outside receiver. This is also a very young team. Maybe not a team that's not going to they're not gonna win a championship right now, but they're looking to build that so they can in the future. Love the route. Um, so keep it young. And Michael Gallup is, is a young. There's a lot of good receivers out there for, in free agency. He's a young, good option here. The only negative is he tore his ACL and he, he was actually just recently had the surgery, so that came a little bit late. So don't love that. But uh, he's a very good, underrated receiver that I think can have a lot more production if he's kind of that go-to guy. So I kind of like the fit. I like to fit alongside him, uh, Amon or St. Brown, and that, that he's kind of still young and kind of could be part of that rebuild. Um, that they're not really they're not really on that stage one of the rebuild. They're maybe stage two. They're starting to get along there. So I like that fit there. I would like that pickup for the Lions. Uh, and they have some cap space. Um, they have enough to make some make some moves. They don't have a, a crazy amount. Uh, but I'd like I'd like Gallup for them. Bears. Uh, DJ Charks, another receiver that's kind of in the same boat as Michael Gallup. Pretty young, out in a solid outside receiver. I was originally going to go big for the Bears. 
I was really going to go go with like one of the, you know, everyone would love to have Chris Godwin. I think the Bears could be in on him. I was going to go big, but I was starting to think, you know, the Bears have, you know, kind of like the Lions, you know, maybe they're further along the lines, but they they have some needs. You know, they have cap space, but they have they have some needs. I mean, you need a receiver. You might need more than one receiver. You need multiple offensive linemen while you got to get James Daniels back. You change your scheme on defense, so you need some things on defense as well th- throughout the, you know, so they have, they, they kind of have a lot of needs here. So you don't want to spend your, your cap space, which they have a decent amount. You don't want to go on one or two players. You want to build this thing. You know, you want Justin Fields to succeed. You want to build everything around him. Um, so I went with the guy that it's not going to be cheap at all, but a guy that can kind of work with that, where you can get this, that, you know, everything, tackle, you know, everything there. So, uh, and then it's the next question is, uh, I, I suppose, um, how will the new staff? What, what are the thoughts on the new staff on Darnell Mooney? That's a tricky thing with the Bears. What type of receiver are they looking for? Uh, because Darnell Mooney played. A little bit in the slot, a little bit outside, kind of split. He actually had more reps outside, um, but he played outside, played in the slot. So what were the new st- new staff? They like him outside, like him in the slot. They want to have him keep playing both. I'm thinking he's more likely to end up in the slot. You know, therefore, DJ Chark, guy that could play on the outside, he also can get separation. So they had Allen Robinson, who was outside receiver. Very good contested catcher, can block, but... You know, maybe separation something you can work on. DJ Chark's got the speed to separate, so pair him with Mooney. You got the speedsters out there uh, that could work well uh, with Justin Fields, in my opinion. So uh, thought about putting tackle up here. Would do they target Teron Armstead there? But it cost a, a good amount. Bears got some cap space though. Uh, the Vikings who don't really have some cap space. Um, Josie Jewell is somebody I like for them. It sounds like the Vikings will be switching to a three-four scheme defensively, which I actually think they have. Um, some guys that can fit that. They just got some needs. Uh, I think another inside linebacker next to Eric Kendricks will be key. Uh, and that's Josie Jewell, whose strengths are probably, you know, stopping the run. Uh, you can blitz him if you'd like to. And where Kendrick's strength is, I mean, pretty much everything, but really dropping in coverage. Uh, so I think that'd be a, they would complement each other pretty well. So they need another one of those types of inside linebackers there. Uh, so that'd be pretty big for them. So they, they could use a corner. Thought about some corners here for them. But I like Josie Joel where he won't be overly expensive. He was injured last year. That probably drives his price down a little bit. Otherwise, the Vikings probably wouldn't be afford him. Uh, but he won't be overly expensive. The Vikings have to clear some space to be able to make moves. I'm not expecting a, uh, I'm not expecting a big free agency with them full of huge moves really uh or in terms of additions um you know if they somehow manage to trade Kirk Cousins I'm not expecting it then maybe they're able to make a lot of moves here but I like this fit to where they're headed the direction they're heading in terms of their defense um in free agency so the Packers are another team uh pretty bad cap space situation so don't expect uh big additions you know I think they can franchise tag Devonta Adams work on a long-term extension figure out the situation Aaron Rodgers uh, you know, they actually can get some guys back because they have future cap space, uh, but just in a hole now. So I wouldn't expect a major move. Uh, but I got like BJ Hill, who was uh, big time actually for the Bengals this year, uh, responsible for their defensive line being very solid. So I, I think that's what the Packers could use. Uh, Lancaster, free agent, and they need to upgrade anyways. This is an upgrade pair. A guy like BJ Hill with Kenny Clark, I think that boosts the defense. I think we'd be looking at. Just defense lines really coming along. You look at the edge with Zedaria Smith and Rashawn Gary who's coming along. You have Kenny Clark on the inside. I think adding one more piece like that, I think that would make sense uh, that you know they could add a guy like this and it could it really boost their defensive line there. So shouldn't really o- be overly expensive uh, because he's kind of a one year wonder guy. Maybe the Bengals try to get him back. You know they probably will. Uh, to the Colts, uh, Randy Gregory. I'd like. I would love this for the Colts. Uh, the defensive end from the Cowboys. Cowboys a little tight in the cap space. Will they be able to get him back? Are they going to roll with Demarcus Lawrence? And maybe play Parsons on the edge full time. It's very possible. I mean, it's possible they just can't afford Gregory either way. The Colts. Have a good amount of cap space. Uh, they're usually a team that tends to kind of sit back, let the market play out, don't spend big, kind of make one big move. Happens to be trades a lot. Uh, Buckner, Wentz, I think they changed that this year. The way we talked about in the past, you know, Ballard kind of relies on development a little bit, lets the market settle. But the way Ursay's talking, we got to go out there and just let's knock this out of the park. I don't know if he's talking about free agency exactly, but let's just go get the job done. You know, so. Um, enough relying on development. Forget that. You know, they, they got some young guys that can play defensive end. I kind of like the future there with Pay and Odangbo, but 
we need a guy. We need to get a guy in there to just get after quarterback. Plain and simple. Help those guys grow as well. So I'd like I like the fit of Randy Gregory. They have the money for sure to go out and get him. So go do it. They could target uh, some receivers as well. They could target uh, corners that fit Gus Bradley's scheme. Uh, but I, I'd like you know I'd take advantage of having the money and because they they keep drafting pass rushers and they're relying on development there. Go get the guy that can get after the quarterback. Problem solved because they've had a. They've had an edge rush problem, you know, recently. Not not really getting after the quarterback too much. Kind of relying on Buckner to get go, go get him. Maybe Darius Leonard sometimes in a blitz. But um, I really, would really like Gregory for him. We'll see if the Colts finally go all out uh, in free agency. There's a couple teams uh, that I want. Come on, get get going here. Uh, Titans. Titans is pretty tight in the cap space. They actually have ways to clear it. Uh, though, and I they'll, they'll probably clear some. Don't expect a major crazy free agency from them. Uh, but they they need a tight end pretty badly. Uh, I like Tunyon for them. I like Robert Tunyon. We'll see if the Packers try to get him back. I mean, there's quite a few actually pretty solid tight ends. Gasicki would probably be tougher to get, maybe more expensive. Dolphins be looking to get him back with their cap space. Uh, use them all, maybe Dalton Schultz. But I like Tunyon for the Titans. I, I like him. He's very sneaky in terms of uh, in, in the passing game, catching the ball, whether it's in the red zone or the, even before the red zone, obviously. I, I think this would boost the Titans big time. So it's a guy I really like for them. Going to have to clear some space though, to make it happen. And they'll probably do that. They'll probably start to clear some there. And just I'm not expecting a crazy free agency for the Titans, but this would be a major addition. Uh, the Jags got a load of cap space. Talk about Chris Godwin again. There's going to be quite a few teams with Chris Godwin as their number one target. The Jags, I think, are they have to be one of them. It's a, I think it's a great fit. Mainly, it's exactly what the Jaguars need for Trevor Lawrence. You know, Doug Peterson in there calling that calling that offense, and they got to scheme things open for for this offense for Trevor Lawrence and that's Chris Godwin. You know, that, that's that's what you do with him. You put him in a slot. He gets open. He's fantastic after the catch. Uh, there was a big receiver problem for them last year. Not a lot of separation, but I still think a guy like Marvin Jones can play. If you pair Godwin with Marvin Jones for Trevor Lawrence, I think it's fantastic for them. Uh, we'll see if the Bucks try to get him back. The Jaguars have the money to go make this happen. This would be huge for them. And if God, if free agency starts and, got, and the Buccaneers didn't lock up Godwin yet and he's available for everybody, for anybody, I would, I'd be shocked and disappointed if the Jaguars weren't in on him. So I'm kind of expecting it. Not that they're guaranteed to sign him or anything like that. Uh, Texans, Marcus Williams from the Saints. Uh, so Lovey Smith is back, but now as the head coach, so we get more of that Tampa 2 Lovey Smith scheme. Um, and the Saints ran, well, the Texans ran more of cover two, which is zone, uh, but the safeties have help over the top. Saints, since they had Marcus Williams till this, the last game they played, they ran a lot two man under, which is it's um, it's a little different, but the safeties got uh, basically the same responsibilities there. So I think uh, Marcus Williams is a guy that could fit them, and he's still a guy that's growing and getting better. Texans have some money to make some things happen here. I do. Marcus Williams is, is a solid young player. I do worry he's a guy that could get overpaid. You know, people putting him in the Jesse Bates level conversation. I don't think they're that close, really. Uh, but a very solid young player. Um, you know, two years ago he was fan, or not to, 2020 he was fantastic. Um, so it's a guy that I think Lovey Smith would like to have there um, in in Houston. Uh, speaking of the Saints, Saints. Pretty far negative cap space wise, uh, they're gonna have to dig themselves out of that hole, and and they will. They just won't be able to make a whole bunch of moves. Maybe some small, similar to last year. You know, they got Winston back. They tagged Marcus Williams. Maybe something like that. You know, maybe get Winston back. Uh, fight to get Teron Armstead back. Uh, then some small signings. Uh, they definitely could use a. You know, we'll just say they get Winston back in this scenario. Uh, they definitely use another receiver. They're going to get Michael Thomas back, and they have Marquez Callaway, but receiver is still a bit of a problem. I would like for them to get an outside receiver that's a little more consistent. Uh, you know, and I like Will Fuller. I like Will Fuller with the Jameis Winston type offense, and Will Fuller is kind of a big name, but he's not going to be that expensive at all. You know, he does. That's the problem with him. He does have the kind of the injury concern, but when he's on the field, he's pretty good. He was actually really getting better after 2020 as well. Before he actually got uh, suspended, he was getting better, you know, with his routes. Because before he was kind of just a speed guy, uh, but recognizing coverages and and, and just uh, having that route running ability. So I would like him with the Saints. He might not be overly expensive, you know. Pair him with Michael Thomas, and you got yourself a group there. So we'll see how the Saints uh, choose to clear that cap space. It's always interesting to see how team what teams decide to do, whether it comes to it's going to be a mixture of all of the above with cuts, restructures. Um, 
extensions to kind of spread space out. Maybe trades. We'll see. Um, that's never a guarantee. But uh, and then speaking, we talked about James Winston a little bit. I'd like for the Bucks to go. Maybe I get a little bold here. I'd like for the Bucks to go for James Winston. I was gonna put. You know, I was thinking about. You know, maybe a receiver, another receiver. You know, a scenario where they get Godwin back, but they need an outside speedy receiver. Uh, you know, to replace Antonio Brown, I, I suppose. But I was thinking about that route, but I would really like for them to get Winston back, you know. And if Winston had his choice for about the same price, Saints, Bucks, he'd probably choose the Saints at this point, maybe. I think so, because uh, the Bucks moved on from him. They, they did get Brady, though, and then win a Super Bowl. But, uh, I, you know, the Bucks, they're positive cap space. They don't have a lot. They have a lot of their own free agents. Spend your money there. Get your guys back to kind of get a cheaper quarterback. Uh, to do that, you you know, what, what other way would you go besides Winston, who kind of knows the offense there, familiar with some of the players? When, remember, when Winston was there, the offense line was actually on the bad side, considered to be on the bad side. They get Brady. They adjust some things. Uh, they add Tristan Wirth. Sometimes that last piece of the puzzle just solves everything, uh, and it's a lot better. So let's we'll see Winston in there again. Uh, you know, and I, uh, I think it'd be a lot better this time around. I think, this can, I think it'd be a playoff team still. So uh, I'd like for the Bucks to go for Winston. Maybe they do it. We'll see. Maybe they rely on Trask. Maybe they try to go big. If they went big for like a more expensive guy, which would be via trade, they wouldn't be able to pay their own guys though. So that's kind of the problem. Uh, Panthers, Connor Williams, guard uh, from the Cowboys, very young guard that's getting better. He had a pretty good year. He had a pretty good year. The playoff game against 49ers, well, we're going to forget about that one. You know, it wasn't the best. But overall, in the regular season, he had a pretty good year. Panthers got some spending money. They got some spending money. They they, they need almost a whole offensive line. You know, Taylor Moten's one of the best in business there at right tackle. But they need almost a whole offensive line uh, there. They need a quarterback. You know, so again, they have the spending money. But you don't want to spend it all on one spot. You know, you don't want to make one splash sign on the offensive line. You're like, there we go. It's solved. No, you kind of want to get multiple solid pieces. So that's why I want Connor Williams, who... Uh, won't be cheap at all, but he won't be super expensive. So that's a starting spot. And you're not going to build an offensive line overnight because, again, they need a lot of it. Um, so you might as well go young. You might as well go young, and he's one of the young, younger, solid options there. So that made sense to me with, for, with Connor Williams uh, to the Panthers. And not a reason I did it, but something that I'm realizing that's interesting is they, they brought in Ben McAdoo from – uh, that it's going to be their offense coordinator. He was actually with the Cowboys, no major role last year. Connor Williams come from there, so maybe he has some kind of input there. Maybe that's really not why I did it, but interesting. Uh, the Falcons, a little tricky because the Falcons are, they look like they're in a little bit of a hole with the cap space, uh, but they have loads of cap space in the future, actually. So what that means is you can sign a free agent and just backload the crap out of it, um, or you could take current your current contracts of your current players a lot of guys that are getting paid a lot and restructure which restructure means is pushing it's not a pay cut uh you push money back and they can afford to do they couldn't pay it later save now pay later type of deal um which they can do because they have loads of cap space in the future so um what they won't be able to do is kind of sign big time guys for like one year deal um which is okay. I don't think anyone's going to complain about them not being able to do that if you're a Falcons fan. Uh, but they need pass rush. They got to get home. They got to get to the quarterback. Harold Landry is a young stud that's getting better. He had a fantastic year for the Titans. And they could franchise. That's a tricky one because is he going to be available? It's kind of up in the air a little bit. Titans spent so much money on defense last year. They start focusing on offense again. Let this guy walk. Maybe not. Uh, but Arthur Smith's there who actually came from the Titans. He's an offensive guy, but, and the Falcons could sign Harold Landry, like a four year deal, long-term deal, backload that money. Um, as long as the Titans didn't get him back and then make it happen there. I uh, was thinking about some offense linemen for them. Didn't love any of the fits. I mean, there's some guys that can fit, but this is one I really liked. I think he fits their scheme, uh, Dean P scheme there. And it would really help them get after the quarterback better than worse than the NFL last year. Um, so that made sense to me. So it's an interesting team. It's an interesting team because you first glance, it's they're not going to be able to do anything. And they, 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 there's some teams that just don't believe in shifting money around and risking the future when you, it's kind of a mystery. I can understand that. Definitely can understand that. Um, so maybe they don't do it, but they actually got the wiggle room for the future. So it's, it's be curious to see how, how they manage that. Broncos. Uh, Broncos going to be looking for a quarterback obviously but that won't be in free I don't think it'll be in free agency but maybe uh maybe it could be but they they may try to go for a bigger guy like 
it would be in trade like an Aaron Rodgers or whoever. Maybe they revisit the Sean Watts situation. but uh, And they got some knees on defense, re-signed some linebackers maybe. But really to polish off this offense besides the quarterback, right tackle. Get a, get a right tackle in there, and man, that offensive line is looking good. It's kind of one last piece of the puzzle there. Trent Brown, right tackle. He's a very good one. The negative here is he does have some injury concern. He seems to miss some games, but he's so he's such a good right tackle. Where, how much is he going to get paid because of that? You know, he, he didn't really work out with the Raiders. I thought he was good when he played for the Raiders. He just didn't play a lot. And then he goes back to the Patriots where it was kind of the only spot where he worked out. So uh, and there's a lot of guys in history that's like they only are good for the Patriots. I don't think that's Trent Brown. I, don't, I, think he could be, I definitely think he could be good elsewhere. But with the injury concern and him only working for the Patriots, will he be cheaper than what we, we would think where his talent level is? Um, so I don't think... Too many teams will be throwing a bunch of money at him. I think only a handful, less than a handful maybe, as I'd describe it. Patriots, I think the Broncos definitely could be one. Finished off that offensive line first, trade for that quarterback, re-signed some linebackers, um, you know, draft. Uh, you might need a draft quarterback for the future if you don't get your quarterback, but I uh, could use another corner, but I think this, it starts right here, so I'd like that for the Broncos. Uh, Raiders, Allen Robinson, I, you know, they need another receiver. They got Hunter Renfro in the slot. That's set in stone. I mean, Zay Jones started to pick it up as an outside receiver down the stretch of the season. He's a free agent. They bring him back. They do want to get better. Allen Robinson had a disappointing year last year. Um, but so that's, it's weird. How much is this guy going to get paid? It's kind of, it's kind of curious to see, you know, how much is he going to get paid? Uh, but he's definitely good still. Very good contest catcher. I'd like, I like to fit with the Raiders offense. I would like him with Derek Carr. I want to see that. So, Really wanted to put Devonta Adams here, Fresno State buddies, Devonta Adams and uh, Derek Carr back together. I really, I didn't use Devonta Adams in this video because I really think he's tagged and then maybe extended by the Packers. Um, Robinson, I think it's realistic he goes elsewhere. I, I like him with the Raiders. I like him with the Raiders. I like the fit there. Pair him with Hunter Renfro. Renfro bring Zay J Jones back for a little cheap too. And then you got the, the trio. You have Edwards as well. Um, you know, it made, makes sense to me. The Raiders got some spending money, uh, and they have loads of f future cap space. So they kind of backload things, shift some money around if they want. So that's fantastic. Their future cap space situation is fantastic. Chargers. I actually wanted to put Allen Rob. I was thinking about Allen Robinson for the Chargers. I was thinking receiver in general for the Chargers because, um, you know, lead the league in drops. Herbert is too good to not be in the playoffs. That offense got to be the best in football. I mean, Joe Burrow, Herbert could be doing what Joe Burrow's doing right now, being in the Super Bowl. Needs those weapons like he has. I'd like Allen Robinson for them. Uh, I think they're going to get Mike Mike Williams and Allen Robinson, similar type receiver. I think they're going to probably get Mike Williams back. I think I'd like it better if they got Allen Robinson instead. But it's not that much of a difference for me where it's like one moves bad and one moves great. You know, it's it's not too far off really. Um, the two options there. Um, so I didn't go that route. I really hope, I worry that they're going to ride it out with their current receivers. They need another one. They need another one that's consistent, uh, especially with separation and hands. So we'll see. Uh, but I like Devondre Campbell for them because they need to stop the run at a better level here. They need linebackers. They need D-line. Um, D-line, they can target a guy like Akeem Hicks, but I would, I think, uh, I think Campbell would really elevate them at the inside linebacker position. You saw where they, we, they elevate how he elevated the Packers. You know, Packers struggling to stop the run. They need an inside linebacker. They get Campbell. It kind of felt like they still needed more, you know, help at the linebacker position. But he ends up being big time for them. Really elevated their defense. Chargers run a pretty similar scheme actually than the Packers, so I think it's a great fit. It's gonna help them stop the run. It's gonna boost that defense for sure. Chargers got loads of cap space, so I'm excited to see what they're gonna do because this is a team that could realistically and should be you know with the cap space they have and what the quarterback they have uh they should be contending for the super bowl so go make it happen go make it happen this offseason so that's a team i definitely got my eyes on uh here the chiefs love me some juju smith schuster for the chiefs i think juju smith schuster has become underrated all of a sudden uh, i think he's better than what the production shows and he's been hurt as well but if he goes to a team like a chief like the chiefs he's gonna be a stud uh he plays a lot of reps in the slot uh the chiefs I mean, they'll line up Hill and Kelsey there sometimes, uh, but they want that true guy in there. But you see what teams have been doing the last couple of years. When they get stopped short, you know, look at the Bengals game this year. Second half, why couldn't the Chiefs score? The Bengals were rushing three guys. They were dropping all those other guys in coverage, and you're just really focusing on Hill and Kelsey. Other guys really aren't open. 
Um, and, and you saw that. We saw that in that game. It's exactly what happened. So if you add another big time receiver, especially a guy in a slot, you know that guy that's kind of a because Juju Smith Schuster's got some length to him too, and he's just a good receiver. Uh, it kind of creates some mismatches in the slot. It opened things up for Hill. It opened things up for Kelsey. If the Chiefs add a guy like this, I mean, Godwin, Godwin would be great too. Uh, but then the Chiefs are going to look to get multiple guys here, Smith Schuster, maybe a defensive lineman, or, or get back Orlando Brown, whether it's tag or extension. Um, this would be huge, huge for them. So, uh, And they were actually, they offered him a contract last year, if I'm not mistaken. So I think they'll be back in on Juju Smith Schuster here. Uh, I love the fit. It's exactly what they need there. So go and do it. Uh, 49ers, Dante Jackson, the corner from the Panthers. Uh, the Panthers have a load of corners. Actually, quite a few of them are free agents, but um, they drafted J.C. Horn last year, and they traded for C.J. Henderson. They traded for Gilmore, and they had Dante Jackson. Gilmore's a free agent. Jackson's a free agent. I like to think they bring one of them back. I don't think they just recently traded for Gilmore just because, you know, just for a rental, and they're going to bring him back. I think they were kind of preparing for Jackson to move on. They didn't want to sign him to a long-term deal. But he's a, he's a solid he's a solid corner. 49ers are a pretty complete team. I mean, I, I would like for them to add another receiver. doesn't have to be this crazy big-time receiver. I, I'd like for them to bring back Lake and Tomlinson. Um, other than that, you know, it's just it's just cornerback. You know, they're going to get Javon Kinlaw back in the defensive line next year. They need another corner. Maybe to pair with uh, Ambry Thomas for the future. So maybe a, lo- a long-term guy. And there's a young guy here in Dante Jackson. What I, The big reason why I like the fit uh, Dante Jackson in the Panther scheme last year, when the defense really started picking up, when these corners, all these guys started playing better last year, 2020 season, they played mainly cover three. So, but some different looks in zone coverage, but you saw a lot of cover three this year, you know, still some different looks, but mainly man coverage. So having that experience in zone and man, that's fantastic. And why I think that's a fit is 49ers mix it up. That was a big reason why this defense had some success down the stretch. D'Amico Ryans had these guys mixing it up. They had them unpredictable. One second they're in cover two, three, man coverage, you know, back and forth here. Um, so I like that. I like that Jackson's young, still improving. It's a kind of a long-term option. Maybe, to, again, pair with a uh, long-term option like Ambry Thomas. Uh, you know, I think he fits. I think he fits there. And the 49ers don't really have the cap space – they have a little bit of wiggle room right now, but it really sounds like they're moving on from Garoppolo, whether it's trade or cut. That's going to free over $25 million. So there you go. Then you have the cap space. Um, so fairly easy way to clear that cap space there for the San Francisco 49ers. Cardinals is a fit I really, really like. I like James Dan. I think James Daniels is underrated. I think he's a sleeper free agent. Uh, I I really like him. The, Car- well, the Cardinals need an offensive line, mainly interior uh, it started to wear down during the end of the season, both years, back-to-back years. Kyler Murray started to get pressure earlier in the snap. Uh, interior pressure is the quickest trip to the quarterback. He was unable to scramble. It affected him for sure. Um, he's got to play better as well, but it definitely affected him. It's a problem. They need interior guys. They might be able, they might be moving on from interior guys as well. James Daniels is a very good, young, interior offensive lineman uh, from the Bears. Nasty blocker, too. Uh, but what I love here is, is that he has experience at guard and at center, both at a pretty somewhat high level. Um, you know, so I think he starts at guard for the Cardinals. They have Rodney Hudson. Rodney Hudson's fantastic, but you know he's getting up there in age. He missed some games this year, and when he was out, it cost the Cardinals some games, some bad snap situations. So you have this guy that if you need to, you can slide him over to center. You know, or he starts at guard, obviously, to start the year. But I think that's fantastic. It's the type of guy they need, not just because. Just, not just because he's versatile, but because it just upgrades your interior offensive line, which you desperately need. Uh, Cardinals are pretty damn tight with the cap space. Uh, they can find ways to, to, you know, do they move on from Jordan Phillips? Again, they can move on from some interior offensive line if they're going to upgrade and get better ones. I mean, they clear a little bit, make a move like this. I don't expect a bunch of crazy moves. This would be a big one for them, in my opinion, though. Uh, Seahawks, I like Carlton Davis for them. They're, they're pretty damn weak at the cornerback position. Uh, they kind of want to get back to playing that Seahawks defense. You know, a lot of cover three. That works out a lot better when you have kind of a box safety like Jamal Adams having in and around the box. Uh, maybe get Diggs back to play the, the free safety position. But 
you need that corner that and you want to mix it up because Seahawks want to mix it up a little bit you don't want to just stay in cover three but we've seen them play more you know some cover two you want to be able to mix some man coverage in there as well everything I just said that's Carlton Davis what he has experience in cover three man coverage some little bit of cover two here and there uh, you know that makes sense to me so it's a young improving corner pretty damn tight in coverage so exactly what the Seahawks need or the Seahawks didn't spend uh, on at the, they didn't spend any value at the cornerback position last year. They let Griffin walk in free agency. Some people kind of questioned it, but you know if we're gonna spend their, their logic was if we're gonna spend big money on a cornerback, he better be damn good and have a damn good future. You know, Griffin was solid. You know he was he was solid. You know Carlton Davis is better and he has a lot of upside there. So I think it's a corner that they'd be worth that would be willing to spend on. And who knows, if they had to redo, you know, maybe they would spend, maybe they'd make that offer for Griffin because how, how weak their cornerbacks were. Not saying that's the case, but I think they'd be, it's a like Carlton Davis is a guy they'd be willing to spend on there. So they need to upgrade the cornerback position. Seahawks are a team, they have a lot of cap space. It seems like recent years, last year they didn't have, they didn't have much at all. But recent years where they had a lot, they were they weren't going out and spending it. You know, they were, they were relying on, relying on what they had, you know, um, so we'll see. We'll see if they learned anything. Let's see if they want to keep Russ. You're gonna have to go in. You're gonna have to go make this team a win now team. You know, if they move on from Russ, which I don't think they do, but if they do, then it could be like a rebuild team. I think a young guy like Davis could be part of that. They could still attack that type type player there. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, the Rams, who are in the Super Bowl, they don't have a lot of spending money, but they they have actually have ways to clear. I would expect an extension from Matthew Stafford uh, that could actually push money back uh, and clear a, a bit. So they can clear a little bit. Not too many needs, though. Makes sense. They're in the Super Bowl. It's a very good roster. I want to bring some guys back, like Von Miller. Um, they don't value the inside linebacker position much. You know, they don't really, they're not going to spend big at, on it, but it's a spot where they definitely can get better. And really, I think they can get a guy that could uh, that can cover a little better because sometimes they're out there with one off-ball linebacker, actually. So get a guy that can make up some good portion of the field and Alexander Johnson uh, from the Broncos I think could be that guy you know he he was injured this year a fantastic year in 2020 it's a he's a scheme fit um, and he's overall balanced but he's very very solid in coverages too in coverage as well so I don't think he, I think he'd be cheaper than what his talent says based on the 2020 season I think he might be a little on the cheaper side than you would expect and the Rams could pay him I think it's a good fit they may ignore the linebacker position in general because sometimes they do that and and they have some young guys. They got they got some guys in there that you know they can play. I just think you can make the defense a lot better with adding that because they're pretty much set everywhere else. It feels like. Um, so I, I just really like the fit. And it's kind of what they need right there. So that was my thinking on the rain, all these teams. Uh, so I really again I really like the fit uh, for all uh, a lot of these free agents for these teams. We'll see if they attack them. We'll see you know a lot a lot of teams will be at targeting the same guy obviously so we'll see who ends up with them there's always surprises in free agency in terms of who lands where and and uh, how much they get paid how many years they get there's always surprises i love free agency it's so much fun uh we have you covered for for free agency in the nfl in general fully of course uh some of my favorite videos are grades with the day like as free agency signings happen we kind of grade them in bulk love doing that uh, and we have live updates and thoughts on our twitter uh, every single day. So check that out. Link down below uh, pinned in uh, the uh, comment section. Along with our Patreon too, which has some important offseason content. A lot of numbers involved there. Cap space. How do you clear it? Uh, what, what, what situation the teams are going to be at? So informing stuff there. So check it out. That's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.